Well, everybody's shame. Everybody grew. Everybody's shame. Mary, Mary, you on my mind. The folks are going, but this is all mine. Mary, Mary, I want to be with you. You're listening to The Morning Show with Kai and Friends. Live from Cleveland, Ohio, as well as some other mystery location. Brought to you by Catalano TV. Start your day with a chuckle and a laugh with Kai Brancaccio and friends. Let's get ready to rock and roll, baby. We'll sing my song. Rolly Baroni is gonna be there too. And Buka! Beaches, welcome to the morning show. It is 7.31 a.m. on the north coast of the United States, the southern shores of Lake Erie. It is going to be a fabulous day because there's going to be a big shadow. Yes, only the shadow knows. And, uh, well, the shadow's going to cover a fairly wide swath today, traversing the country and a uh i will say something like a 45 degree angle and we've got like 49 is it 48.7 degrees here close to cleveland ohio it's going to be a pretty day looks like it's hopefully we're going to have clear weather for this uh solar eclipse so all the uh all the uh well, all the people who worship nature <laughs> can have a celebration. The pagans. It's a pagan festival, right? Should be interesting. That's kind of fun. It happens very rarely. Do you get the you're in the path of totality, which we are here in Cleveland, Ohio. We are in the path of totality, meaning we'll have a total solar eclipse. The sky will go completely dark as the uh, moon passes in front of the sun. We'll see the uh, corona of the sun, my corona. Do, 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 my corona. No, it's not a beer. It is the fiery edge that's on the edge of the, the sun that you can't really see most of the time because, well, it's the corona, and you can't exactly look at the sun, right? And so now the middle portion of the sun is blocked out and the corona will be exposed. And so it should be interesting for some uh, information gatherers and those who want to celebrate this pagan-like festival. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give all those people props that want to be afraid. And, oh, my God, the end of the world. They're killing the earth. Look what the earth is saying. Something back to us from... The shadow of the sun. Uh, well, stupidity and the ignorance. Makes you laugh, though, doesn't it? When you hear these people, oh, what's going to happen? A, it's a freaking shadow, man. What happens when you walk under a tree? Yeah, yeah, same thing. Now, is the core of the moon iron? Yes. Is there going to be, you know, some minor, you know, physics uh, things that will you know um, there'll be some minor differences yes will there be a, a slight change in terms of gravity no not really too much i mean the moon the moon moves across the earth right it's it's in a position between the earth and the sun it's not exactly in between the position but you know it's just doing what it normally does it just happens to be in one particular orientation that uh, blocks gives you a shadow so you know, is there going to be much of a difference? Not really, just visually, which is, you know, pretty big difference in that regard. But uh, is it something to fear? Oh, no. This shadow from this moon is going to hurt me. I don't think so. <laughs> I think you're going to be fine. 
Maybe that's why Venom's not here. Maybe he's he's afraid of, of what's going to happen today with the moon. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Venom, Venom should be in here. He's got the link. Of course, uh, you know, uh, seems to be no shortage of drama with what's going on. <laughs> So we went with the bated breath for the Alpha Shot Lounge tonight at 6 p.m. to see what the Venom has in store for us. He's newly wed. And, uh, well, that's that's the story, and he's sticking to it. So, And uh, Mrs. C confirmed it via uh, live uh, phone call with uh, Venom the other day. So I have no reason to believe it's a... It's a work, so to speak. You know, it uh, seems to be legit. And uh, so we'll see what's going on there. I guess uh, he was at a baseball game yesterday. He he took a flight somewhere, he said, and he went to a baseball game. That was the impression I had. And um, I don't know. It just seems like <laughs> if you're married, newlywed, you don't just hop on a plane and take off. <laughs> you tell your wife an hour before you go, hey, I'm, I'm going to hang out with the guys today, all day today and tonight. And uh, just leave her behind. <laughs> well, you'll have some explanations when he comes in. It should be interesting. But, uh, well, you know, we'll see what comes out of it when Venom finally shows up. So you, you might be asking yourself, well, what national day is it today, Kai? And, you know, the other thing is um, we've got to do Kai's morning stretch. 7.37 a.m. You take each respective limb. The arms, the legs. You take the left one, reach out in its direction, stretching out towards that way, taking in a deep breath. Take the opposing diagonal leg, reach it out. That's the right leg. Reach it out in its respective direction. Taking in a deep breath and then doing the same thing with your other arm and your other leg. You know, the right arm, reaching out, stretching, taking a deep breath. The left leg, reach out, stretching, taking a deep breath. And that is how the endorphins will start to flow. You will get to a place of calmness and peace. And you will take just one moment to think of that which you have to be thankful for. It doesn't take much. There's, it's easy to find one or two things. Most certainly easy to find one or two things to be thankful for. If you can't find one or two things to be thankful for, you're not in a good place right now. <laughs> you can get there, though. That's the good news. The good news is you can get there. You think about some of the simple things that you have to be thankful for. And, uh, I mean, if it really has to get real down to the foundation, well, that's the worst. The worst the conditions are is the more fundamental you have to get. Like, I have a roof over my head. I mean, these are the basics. <laughs> you shouldn't have to come to those. But, hey, you know, if it does, there's still those are things to be thankful for, right? But, um, you know, you, 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 you pick those items and you think about them and you reflect on them and then you move forward in today. You decide that today is going to be a great day because that's the only way great days happen is uh, through a decision. You decide it's going to be a great day. You've got the butterfly effect on your behalf working in your interest because you just reflected on what you have to be grateful for. You decided it's going to be a great day, and that means that there are going to be decisions you're going to make. There are going to be actions that you take today that are going to help to move that great day into a solid position of being the great day that it's going to like you know just might have little things that you want to get planned and uh, help you to define what a great day's results are and you will take actions to move towards that and you might not have otherwise done that had you not decided it's going to be a great day now that great day today will be accompanied by one unique thing for some of us in the path of totality, 
What is the path of totality? I don't know what is it. Please tell me, somebody. I don't know. The path of totality. Yes, it's a total freaking shadow. You're you're totally under the tree. That's the path of totality. The whole freaking shadow's on you. Hello, big big deal, right? Anyway, so you're in the path of totality. We'll have a shadow flying over us tonight. Today, I don't know, somewhere three. 315 or something like that. Of course, we'll look it up. Yesterday, me and Miss Honey Bee, we went to the local hardware store and we picked up a pair of these stupid glasses that are worth 25 cents. We paid $3 for. <laughs> we, will, we will put on the stupid glasses and then I will take my phone and screw it up and mess it up by taking a picture of the Eclipse, which you know I'm not supposed to do. And uh, that's what I'm going to do because I'm stupid. I'm going to use my phone to take a picture of the sun. And uh, don't do that, folks. Don't do that. They said I can ruin ruin your camera on your phone. But I, I, I it's hard to believe, really. Anyways, um, we're going to have some fun. They've got, like, some kind of pagan festival here uh, in a nearby city where they're actually going to have a, a concert. There's going to be live music and you know, all the pagans can get together and dance around in a circle, right? <laughs> you know, they have those three or four legs rotating in a in a spinning disc, you know. That's actually the, the symbol of the seasons that goes way, way, way before World War II, which is uh, similar in appearance to some other things that are, well, they're not the most pleasant things to see. But those uh, symbols uh, far predate World War II anyways, and uh, they don't mean certain things to certain people because uh, if you have any background in art and history and know what the uh, change of the season symbols used to be, they don't bother you so much. Um, of course, you know, you associate them with the disgusting part of history that is really a stain on humanity, quite frankly. But, um, you know, you, you can see beyond those things too. So anyways, I don't see, I don't see Sparky coming in here. We'll only call him Sparky if he's not here. <laughs> when we get here, we will call him Sparky. Sparky don't like to be called Sparky Kahunanui. I think he, he coined that phrase. I, or was it Donks? I forget. Anyways, listen, let's go to the chat and say good morning, see what's going on with the folks here. Hey, Justin Pizio Electrico. Miss Honeybee saying good morning. I have to find my Eclipse glasses. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> Great to see you in here, Justin Pizio Electrico. Glad you made it in. Hey, hey Ross Dogs, Broken Spirit. How are you today, sir? Uh, glad to see you in here. You got some crosstalk in the chat. And uh, Justin Pizio Electrico wants to start out the Monday morning talking about a very lovely, positive engaging subject being uh, <laughs> on the edge of war with Iran. I ran so far away. Yep. That's the song he's talking about. By Flock of Seagulls. You remember the Sopranos episode where the guy with the weird hair haircut Tony's pushing him around. He's like, sit down, Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> that was a great scene, man. That was a great scene. Anyways, yeah, Justin, I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. I think um I think that um the legacy media is, gets its talking points from where it gets it. And uh well let's let's just say that uh <laughs> Israel's not helping things in terms of uh well some of the political actions going back and forth. And that's all I'm gonna say because I don't really get into that. We don't do politics in the morning here at all. At all, frankly. And Miss Honeybee has some kind words. I'm thankful so much. Yep, that's my best buddy. And she likewise does the same for me. Yep, sometimes you get lucky in life. And then you're thankful for it, too. Ross Dog says, <laughs> I, I, I'm guessing. Now, I didn't read it yet, folks, but I'm guessing this is one of Ross Dog's famous assertions. Let's see. Major League, Kai's favorite film debuted on this date in 1989. No kidding. Is it that long ago? 
major league. How about that? Wow, that's a uh, that's that's hard to believe. Oh, that don't seem that long ago, does it? Major League. Yep, great film. Definitely a lot of fun. Now, you might be asking yourself, but Kai, well, okay, you might be asking me. Kai, what day, what national day is today? Kai, please tell us. We want to know. And Kai would tell you that today's national. <laughs> You're not going to believe this one. Today is National Empanada Day. That's what it is, folks. Today is National Empanada Day. Now, I do not recommend eating the uh, grass product that covers that empanada. However, the carn of the, the the carnivore in me wants to eat the contents that are meat, which is very good for you. Plenty of protein and all the vitamins and nutrients that you need to be a healthy man or woman, for that matter. So, yeah, National Empanada Day. Can you embrace that one? We'll have to make a trip to the uh, to our favorite Mexican store in Painesville, Ohio, today. <laughs> National Empanada Day. How about that? Also, though, today is National Zoo Lovers Day. Well, frick, who doesn't like, who doesn't love the zoo? I mean, are there things about the zoo that are, you know you might not love? Yeah, yeah. They're they're good. if you go into the uh, certain parts, you know, like for instance, if you got pink flamingos in your zoo, you're gonna know when you get near them. You, long before you get real close, you're gonna know they're there because them things stink. Uh, curious point about pink flamingos: the color comes from that which they eat. And if you were to change their food, they're not the same color. Very interesting, huh? You are what you eat, says the pink flamingo. Man, they stink, though, let me tell you. You always hear about people talking about how stinky birds are. Didn't realize how stinky some birds can be until you get near the pink flamingos. Do love going to the zoo, though. Absolutely, definitely one of the favorite pastimes. Let's see. Justin Pizio says, when lightning met spider. When lightning met spider. <laughs> hey, Terry Nee is in the house. You better not. You better not. <laughs> I like that. Good morning, Terry. And by the way, happy Monday and happy birthday. I'm going to just cover all bases here in case Cut of the Jib's listening and he can't get to the keyboard. Happy Monday and happy birthday. <laughs> Terry Knee in the house. And Ross Dogs uh, asks a question here. Do the Ruskies still have a space station? I don't think they have their own space station. I think they're part of the international one now. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that one got uh, intentionally decommissioned and uh, took a trajectory to burn up. I might not have that exactly right, but I'm sure somebody can look it up in here if they uh, want to edumacate us. As to the current information on that, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, they they are part of the International Space Station now. In fact, they they have fabricated portions of it. Um, does it happen to be the ones where they're having difficulties and challenges? And yes, it's that portion. <laughs> but, uh, they have their contributions, and um, well, you know. Deep State would have you believe all kinds of things that uh, Russia this and Russia that, right? Just part of the agenda. We're not going to do politics though here this morning. And some crosstalk in the chat. 
What else? Other than National Zoo Lovers Day, today is National All is Ours Day. Shows a man standing on top of a mountaintop with his arms spread out. Almost saying something like the gladiator is saying, Are you not entertained? But just holding his arms out saying, This is all mine. <laughs> you got the world by the collions. Seize the day. National All is Ours Day. Yes. All, all possibilities and all potential exist for the future. And what is in your mind is what can be manifested in life. And this goes back to the makings for a great day. If you suddenly pick up some new goals today and say, hey, this is where I want to be, uh, and you, you make it in terms of something practical, and now when I say practical, I mean that maybe if you know it's something that can't get done for f maybe a week and a half, and you try, you know, you want to get it done in five days. Well, that's okay. You know, so you set your goals high, and if you fall a little bit short, you're okay with it because you realize you were very aggressive in what your expectations and hopes were. But sometimes, sometimes you realize that you are capable of doing things faster and more efficiently than you anticipated. And the only way to arrive at that point is to challenge yourself with goals that you think you might not be able to meet. And so there's, that's a healthy thing. Now, as long as you don't take the defeat of the timing that you plan for those things as something that's a negative. I mean, is it a slight, you just make it a slight negative and realize that, you know, you might have taken a lot longer had you not made that goal of getting it done in that amount of time. Anyways, Terry Knees giving us the peace sign. <laughs> Terry Nee says, Happy Apocalypse Day. Come on, Terry. You don't believe that. You know it's no different than being under a shadow of an iron vessel in the sky. <laughs> an iron cord vessel in the sky, so to speak. And Ross Dogs has a comment here. He says, If you had been framed for a crime and it was necessary to flee the U.S., what country would you hide out in for the rest of your life well that's an interesting question i'd like to hear what the folks in the chat have to say about that i'm going to read it again if you had been framed for a crime in other words that somebody set you up this and it made it look like you did something and it was necessary for you to flee the country or flee the u.s or whatever country you're in put it that way Flee your current nation. What country would you hide out in for the rest of your life? That's an interesting, very interesting question. I imagine there'd be certain things you'd think of. Like, um, you know, you start thinking about third world places, and then you realize that, you know, foreigners get questioned. Foreigners are often... Uh, subject of discussion and interest for people in towns. So you don't want to go a place where there's not a lot of, uh, well, let's just say expats, right? Unless you have the ability to blend in with the native language. If you have mastered the native language and you are undetectable, well, now you've got a tremendous advantage where, you know, you could probably find a lot of places in that, that locale. Um, if, if I had been framed for a crime and it was necessary to flee, what country would I hide out in for the rest of my life? Well, I think I'd make an effort to maybe go to Sicily. <laughs> I think that, that could be interesting. I don't know if you folks have ever been there. Some of the nicest people in all of Italy, which, you know, some people don't define Sicily as part of Italy, but it is in my eyes. Anyways, um, some of the nicest people in all of Italy were in Sicily, and some of the most beautiful countryside was there. Some of the ancient Greek ruins were there because that was actually one of the biggest Greek settlements was actually in Sicily. I want to say there were more Greeks in Sicily than there were 
in the mainland of Greece at one time, or I should put it this way, the city's density of population in the city, it was like one of the biggest cities of, in all of Greece at the time. In fact, um, there's a lot of great history in Sicily as well. And of course, you know, southern Italy, Italy has plenty of uh, ruins. And let's 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 be honest. The food's freaking great over there. <laughs> What's not to like? Okay, let's see. Who's chimed in here? I want to hear what the folks have to say. Um, that's a great question, though. Uh, Ross Dogs always, always has interesting things to say. And Terry Nee says the country that he would go to. Oh, this is funny. This, sometimes there's like this no man's land when you're, when you're in... Um, the chat on uh, Rumble. The comments are a little harder to play here because they don't scroll quite as smoothly. Anyways, um, Terry Nee says, California, that's the country he would go to. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting, Terry. Tell us why you choose California to uh, hide if you committed a crime. Because... Uh, I'm guessing Terry's going to say because of all the criminals that are already there. <laughs> I don't want to put words in his mouth. Let's hear what he has to say, though. Um, you know, being being that he's in uh, Pennsylvania, he knows a lot about crimes with regard to elections. Just kidding, Terry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Miss Honeybee chimes in. She says Italy as well. Oh, yeah, because... Uh, well, hell, man, I, I ain't leaving my wife behind. I can tell you that much. That's not an option. Of course, you know, then there's the other side of things. If if things were dangerous and bad, you wouldn't want to put your, your spouse in danger. You'd say, okay, I'll have to make a place, get some things set up, and then bring you or something like that, I guess. I don't know. This is a crazy hypothetical question that's kind of entertaining for a Monday morning, frankly. And Jared says, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good one there, too. Miss Honeybee brings up Turkey. The um, southern shores of Turkey, which basically is just littered with Greek ruins. Tons of Greek ruins on the southern shores of Turkey. Beautiful country. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, they have pretty good food in Turkey, too. I think that'd be kind of a fun place to hang out. Ross Dogs comes in with his answer, Belize. Yeah, I've heard a lot of great things about Belize. I've never been there. I have heard a lot of wonderful things about it. And Jared Merlick, welcome in here, buddy. It's great to see you. Says, I want to be in Bogota, Colombia. Enjoy the eclipse, East Coasters. We will. We will definitely enjoy the eclipse. He's, he says, I want to be in Bogota, Colombia. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I think Colombia is not the place it used to be in terms of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not as dangerous as it used to be. Does that mean the cartels are basically just running the country so it's a little more safe? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is, that for sure. Uh, we know that that's the case for Mexico. At least we have a high suspicion that's to be accurate. Ah, <laughs> Ross Dogs. That's a funny one. He says, he says, Mr. Big Shot would go to Tajikistan. Now, Ross Dogs, do you honestly think Mr. Big Shot would fit in well in Tajikistan? He wouldn't stand out like a sore thumb, you don't think? Maybe he wouldn't. Maybe he would fit in. Maybe he'd blend in quite nicely there. Who knows? I mean, if you got enough of those robes and stuff and head towels and whatever, yeah, maybe be undetectable. And, uh, Justin Pizio says, Prigozhin chilling 
in a cabin right now with Walter White. Prigojin chilling in a cabin right now with Walter White. Well, all righty. <laughs> and us. And us, right? And um, Justin says he's only getting 25% eclipse in the Pacific Northwest today. Yeah, we are in the path of totality. We are in the path of totality. I'm so scared. Yep. Oh, Miss Honeybee's got a message. And she says, and I'm not sure, did I miss, did I miss his uh, comment? She's got a message from uh, Kai. Venom isn't coming on. He said, sorry, Kai, woke up something. I ate, got me sick this morning. I'll see everyone later today at 6 p.m. Okay. Um. Well, inquiry minds want to know how she got that message. So I'm going to mute just for a moment. Forgive me. Talks amongst yourselves. And uh, Miss Honeybee informs me that he did comment in the chat here. So now I'm going to dig back and look to see if I can't find uh, Venom's comment. It's not showing up here in the. Uh, the Rumble Studio feed. Thank you, Miss Honeybee, for letting me know. Now the mystery is why doesn't it show up in the uh, chat here on Rumble Studios? Very strange. And you see that in the YouTube chat? Yeah. Very interesting. Um, yeah, that, that's the thing. On the, the Rumble Studio, you can only see a certain number of chats, and it's got a funny way of scrolling uh, anyways i don't see anyways i'm going to take her word at it whatever it is um venom has uh said he's not gonna be making it we hope he feels better he said uh, got a tummy ache i guess so to speak something he ate got him sick this morning anyways he's good he says he's gonna be on the alpha shot lounge later all right now listen Venom, just to cheer you up, just to cheer you up, we're going to show an image here. Um, I don't think we have Kahuna Nui or Donks in here, but I, they got a kick out of this one. Venom, this is what they're calling Sparky. It's a, <laughs> it's a spark plug with the unleashing a lightning bolt. And in fact, this would be a good time to actually show Venom. Like, you don't want to mess with Venom, man. Because this is what Venom will do to you if, if you mess with him. You've been thunderstruck! You don't want to mess with that. But uh, the other side of the equation is, is that sometimes it misfires. And instead of th a thunderbolt and lightning and, like, super high voltage, you get this. this You've been thunderstruck! Oh, fizzled out. See, yeah. Sometimes that's what happens. Doesn't quite, uh, doesn't quite go. You know, it doesn't quite fire off properly. So you know, these things happen. You know, uh, nothing's perfect. There's, it's an imperfect we, world we live in. So sometimes these things happen. I tell you what, though. One of the things I like to do is to. Get a little bit of extra energy and play something that wakes people up. And doggone it, this one will wake you up a little bit. Let me know. Are you awake? <laughs> I think you are now. That'll wake you up, won't it? I think so. Anyways, I don't want Sparky to get mad. <laughs> we'll take that picture off. 
And, uh, well, this guy's not here today either. I think he's out with some uh, staffers, if you know what I'm saying, getting a staff infection, so to speak. <laughs> Something along those lines. I don't know. And, uh, well, this guy, I don't know. He's not here anymore. <laughs> this guy here, well, he had his hair done, but the one we got, it all got shaved off. And, well, Kahuna knew he's convinced that he no longer has the powers. <laughs> and, uh, well, this guy has some powers, but they're in a different realm, if you know what I'm saying. Of course. Juan's got a secret that he's trying to hide. He's got multiple personalities living inside. There's Mr. Big Shot strutting down the street. Spider and Venom Spider ready to compete. One minute he's confident, calling out shots. Ooh, yeah. Next he's crawling, climbing walls, tangled in a web of thoughts. Oh yeah. Juan's got a battle fighting deep within his soul. Deep within his soul. Multiple personalities take control. But in this crazy world full of twists and turns, twists and turns. One searching for himself, who he truly yearns to be. <laughs> I think he's dancing on the ceiling. I don't know. He's running with the night. One of those two. Maybe both at the same time. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, hey, look at here. We've got a we've got a comment from none other than Venom Spider. We're actually able to see this one. I don't get the other one why we couldn't see it, honestly. But here's one. It says it's from Venom Spider, and it says, You're fired for missing my chat. No better yet time for you to get struck. Well, <laughs> listen, Venom, if I'm being honest, brother, and I, I do consider you a brother, a dear brother, by the way, if we're being honest, I don't feel fired. You know how that song where he says, I don't feel tardy? I don't feel fired. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't feel fired. There's no indication that I'm fired. Maybe I'm a little fired up. That's what you're saying. Yeah, is that what you mean? <laughs> Don't get too mad at me now. If you were in here, I would have taken that sparky image down. I wouldn't want to make you mad. But you also, being the entertainer that you are and the uh, the creator of so many different personalities and uh, interesting characters for the show, you, of all people, understand the show business. And, well, sometimes we got to show Sparky <laughs> because why? Because it makes good television. That's why. <laughs> television, so to speak. Oh, okay. Now somehow by some mystery. No, nope. I still couldn't see it. Except for you're fired. That one I saw. And Ross Dogs is like, uh-oh. Venom fired him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. Lions, tigers, and spiders. <laughs> ah. Oh, anyways. Miss Honeybee was just playing. Let's see. Justin Pizio says, Venom is preparing. I think, I think what Miss Honeybee was doing was she was actually reading venoms because she thought maybe i wouldn't be able to see his his uh chat so she was just kind of wording what he was saying just the pizza says venom is preparing ground offensive well bring it to cleveland we're ready for you <laughs> me and my indians and chief wahoo will be at the front door greeting you <laughs> and trust me chief wahoo's not one to mess with Especially if he starts turning red, you'll know he's upset. You know what I'm saying? Chief Wahoo. Don't mess with Chief Wahoo and my Cleveland Indians. 
Speaking of Cleveland, boy, I had some fun listening to bits and pieces of uh, the Don this morning. We'll get into that a little bit towards the end of the show here, but boy, it was entertaining as all hell. Joey is a natural-born entertainer. I know you all know that here on Catalina TV, but, man, it was funny. He had me in stitches, absolutely in stitches. He knows how to work. He knows how to work a thing, too. He, he works a bit. He knows how to work it good. He, he really has fun with it. And that's the brilliance and the genius that Joey C. that not everybody gets. Some people, they finally catch on to it. Salute. Anyways, Jared Merlick says, that's far. Let's see. Oh, I think I'm, I floated back on comments here a little bit. Yeah, I got to get caught up. Yeah, Venom Spirit the Ground Offensive. I read that one. And uh, Terry Knee. <laughs> he says, scared the shit out of me. Oh, that's probably that other thing that we played earlier, huh? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here comes Venom, man. He's, he's releasing his Thunderbolts. Well, let me tell you, Venom, I, I see the th Thunderbolts, and I hear what you're saying. But what you're saying is translating to something a little different. It's like this. You've been thunderstruck. <laughs> that one didn't. That that those those thunderbolts did not fire properly. Again, I just want to make sure that we're abundantly clear here. When you tried to fire those thunderbolts, this is what happened. You've been thunderstruck. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton is at the helm or something. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like he's he's running things, and, well, those those Thunderbolts aren't firing off properly, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying, Sparky? <laughs> hey. It's just Sparky. I mean, how offensive can that possibly be? It's what? It's an image? of our dear friend, Venom, in front of a spark plug. I mean, yeah, how offensive can that possibly be? It's not that offensive, really. Let's be honest, right? Just all in good fun. Listen, um, up, oh, what's that, Terry? Something scared you? Something like uh, this? What the hell was that? <laughs> Goodness gracious. How obnoxious are you this morning, Terry Knee? I mean, you're scaring the heck out of us over here. I can only take so much of that stuff, Terry. You know? I understand you're the birthday boy and all that, you know, but come on. You know? <laughs> and uh, what do we got here? Oh, this, this could be... Uh, this could be interesting. And WW, that is a combination of Vs, if you look at it in the way I do, uh, <laughs> says, Kai, you're doing a good job representing Catalano TV. Why, thank you very kindly. Uh, I think the boss would agree with you on that. <laughs> That's what we aim to do. We're trying to do that. I don't know, man. If you listen to Joey... He did a hell of a show last night. <laughs> Freaking guy is a genius, man. I'm telling you, I just love it. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. It's, it's. I, I wish I could have played the whole thing. But listen, any of you that know Joey, you can't put Joey's videos on two. You can't run them a double time, okay? Not when it's Joey C. You could do that with all the others. All the others you can run at double speed, and you'll be fine. Not Joey C. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Great entertainer. Natural born. But thank you for the kind words, W W W. 
I am sorry. I added another W. I, I know. What's the difference? Three or two? Is it a big deal? I, I don't know. I don't think it's that big of a deal. But thanks for the kind words. Listen, I think that uh, it's a good time to run the um, development fund for Joey C's Wooden Toe Product Development Funds. He's Listen, he's making a big move. He's going out to Vegas. He's making a big move. He's going to Vegas, then later on he's going to California. Eh? He's going to meet up with DG. Oh, by the way, he's going to be on with DG tonight, as I understand it. Maybe late night. I'm not sure. Anyways, DG is supposed to be on tonight, as I understand it. Um, but anyways, Joey's making a big move out to Vegas. He's making a big move out to California. Eh? And, you know, if you know anything about Joey, he's got wooden toes. And so, well, we got to help him support Joey C. And so here we're going to run the promo for the wooden toes. And just want you to know, you don't have to worry about frostbite when you have wooden toes. All right, everybody. Listen, um, today, today is a day. If you want to take yourself back like a couple thousand years, just for the sake of you know being today, if you want to take yourself back a couple thousand years, hey, Ross Dogs, kind words. Thank you, man. I'm glad you appreciate that. Get we get a lot of compliments on that actually on the on the music though. People want to know if we're going to release an album. At some point, maybe we will. I think there's a. It would not be that hard to do, quite honestly. Anyways, uh, yeah. If you want to participate today, and take yourself back like a couple thousand years, you want to become a pagan for a day. You can just imagine what uh, what people would have experienced a couple thousand years ago, or say fifty thousand years ago. You know, you know how, you know how it's human nature to fear lightning to fear thunder these things actually protect you right the amyg amygdala in the brain is the fear center it actually saves your butt <laughs> sometimes right you're afraid to go out when it's lightning and thundering well why because you might get your ass struck by lightning that's why so that's good to be fearful maybe you go by a, a pond maybe in the everglades and you you're fearful of the water because you don't know what lurks but just beneath the water just below the surface of hot tub there's an alligator you know the the fear center of the brain you know protects you so can you just imagine fifty thousand years ago or two thousand years ago 
Oh, no. The thing that has been a constant in my life every single day that I've been on this planet Earth, which is the sun rising and setting, regardless of a lot of clouds, a little clouds, no clouds, blue sky, the sun rises and the sun sets. Somehow, for some reason, this strange oddity in my life occurs all of a sudden. Just remember, you have no education. You have no knowledge except for the natural world around you. And you haven't exactly been, you know, gotten yourself a master's degree in philosophy or reason. So it's not like you're you're this all-knowing person with wisdom that uh, knows what to expect or what is upon you. And all of a sudden, that big flashlight in the sky stops working. Kind of like Venom's, you know, thunderbolt when it starts to turn to chicken sounds. It just stops working. So all of a sudden, that flashlight in the sky is covered by another vessel that you see in the sky. And you're like, oh, no. You're just scared out of your mind because you don't know what it is. And and I liken this to the same experiences it would have been 50,000 years ago when they have rain. And all of a sudden, after rain, you see the beautiful rainbow. They're like, oh, no, is this a sign from the gods, right? You know, or ball lightning. Can you imagine what it was to see ball lightning 2,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago? Somebody saw ball lightning. That scared the living crap out of you, right? Like, what is this magic? Scares me. I don't understand it. And let's be honest. There's still things in this world, most of the things in this world that are still not understood. And maybe a lot of which haven't even been experienced yet. But anyway, so have fun today. Be a pagan. And just use your imagination a little bit to think about what it must have been like 50,000 years ago. How much natural fear and maybe uh, anxiety would come about people that uh, experience that thing. Of course, right after it's done, you know, you, most animals that don't think a lot because they can't, uh, after the shadow's done and they just go about their things, they'll eat some more grass, right? It's not going to affect them the rest of the day course you know being the more pensive creature that a human is that's gonna bother your ass right <laughs> the sun went out today oh no what when is this gonna happen again you'll spend the rest of your life wondering is that is that light gonna go out is is that light gonna stop shining and we could stop having sunshine in the world oh no <laughs> Just imagine, you know, for, for a day. It's kind of fun to use your imagination and think about what it must have been like for, for folks back in the day, right? People, they, they might not even had, the, you know, a, a common language that spanned a very large geographical area, right? I mean, there's probably... The one thing that we know is that the information about the stars, because, listen, they didn't have TV. What they have to watch at night? The skies. The skies are so much natural beauty. They didn't have light pollution, pollution that we did, that we do. So the knowledge of the stars was plentiful back then because that was, that was something. Uh, you know, that's what you talked about. That's what you saw in the evening, right? So they had some knowledge of the stars, but man, they didn't understand why you have lightning or if they see something in the star like a comet. That was a big deal too, right? That which you don't understand as a human. Well, there's reasons for some people to be fearful about it, right? So they might get afraid. But, yeah, in this day and age, yeah, it's a shadow. Hello. But just have a little fun with it and, and use your imagination to think about what it might have been like for folks. Let us know. Any of you plan to go out today and observe it? I told you guys that we got our stupid glasses. <laughs> we got our 25-cent glasses that we paid $3 for at the hardware store yesterday. So let us know. Anyways, at this point, I think it is time to say goodbye. Booga booga. Not without one more misfire of lightnings. You've been thunderstruck! <laughs> Anyways, appreciate y'all coming in here today. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you all have a great day. Enjoy the solar eclipse, partial be it or not. Uh, have some fun. Imagine what it might have been like for folks 50,000 years ago, a couple thousand years ago. Just just to have some fun with it, you know. It's it's great this day and age. There's never been a better time to be alive with all the knowledge that we have today. 
and all the abundance that we have today. So, yeah, just to take a moment to appreciate the, the, the time and the experience you have today. Cheers, Chiviriamo, Chao, Nastrovia, Lachayam, Skol, Tally-ho!